Reaction today on the heels of that unscripted and very personal speech President Obama made about the death of Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman's not guilty verdict. There are very few African American men in this country who haven't had the experience of being followed when they were shopping in a department store. That includes me. There are very, very few African American men who haven't had the experience of walking across the street and hearing uh, the locks click on the doors of cars. That happens to me, at least before I was a senator. Joining me now, Congresswoman Karen Bass, a Democrat from California. Always good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. So you put out a statement not too long after the president spoke. Did you yes. have any idea he would be speaking so candidly? No, I didn't, but I tell you, it was really a pleasure to hear him speak like that. It was painful, though. But, you know, I mean, the president has been so criticized in the past if he makes any mention of race. You remember the criticism he received when he said that if he had a son, he would look like Trayvon. But it was wonderful to hear him speak from the heart, to talk about his own personal experience, and to mirror the fact that he knows that African-American boys, men, go through this experience on a daily basis. And how, a lot of women, too. And how important is it, um, Representative Bass, do you think for people to understand that perspective? And how much do you think many people in this country don't even think about that? Well, I mean, I know that people don't. And, and here's what I always say, because a lot of people will listen to this and say, well, I've never experienced that, people who aren't African American. And I always say, for one moment, can you just take a deep breath and say, it isn't my experience, but is there something I can learn here? Instead of just being dismissive, which is what I hear all the time. People say, ah, well, I don't believe police act that way. I don't believe that happens. Just because it's not your personal experience does not mean it doesn't exist. And if you have an entire population saying that this is a normal occurrence almost on a daily basis, then obviously it has to be valid. So what kind of a outcome do you hope will come from what's happening right now in your town and these hundred cities across the nation? I mean, we've been taking people live to Los Angeles and, and watching what's going on there. What do you hope those who attend this rally take away? Well, I think a couple of things. You know, one, people collectively need to grieve and they need a place to vent their emotions, and I think that's very important. But I'm always about action, and I think that there's several things that are happening and are going to be happening around the country that we need to pay attention to. There's the young people in Florida right now who I'm frankly are very proud of that are standing up in the governor's office and saying we need to repeal stand your ground laws. That needs to happen in 33 states. You know, you know, in a couple of months, we're going to have another trial, another 17-year-old who was shot based on stand your ground laws uh, explicitly here. 17-year-old Jordan Davis was in his car. A man who was white came over and said he was playing his music too loud. He was in his car with a number of people. They shot him, and he said he was standing his ground. So Trayvon Martin was an absolute tragedy. My heart breaks for that family every single day because I know the pain that they wake up with, mm. but this is continuing to happen. We're going to have another trial again in Florida at the end of September. This needs to stop. You know, speaking of trials, um, Mark O'Meara, Zimmerman's, George Zimmerman's attorney, he put out a statement after the president spoke. Here's part of what he put out, quote, we uh -huh. hope that the president was not suggesting that this case fits a pattern of racial disparity because we strongly contend that it does not. What is your well, reaction? <laughs> well, my reaction was uh, I thought it was an offensive statement, and I'll tell you why. Right after the verdict came out, the defense attorney also said that if it was switched and Zimmerman were um, African American and Trayvon were white, the same thing would have happened. And I'm sorry, there's just no historical evidence that documents that. Mm. Can you imagine if 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 um, Trayvon Martin was trying to stand his ground? He didn't even know who that was that was coming up on him. If Zimmerman was afraid, why didn't he just stay in the car? So I was offended by his statement, and I was offended by the statement that he made right after the verdict came out. Mm. Part of the statement um, that you put out mentions the need to, quote, put resources in place to bolster African-American youth, especially young boys, in the aftermath right. of the murder of Trayvon Martin. What would you like to see done? Well, uh, you know, actually, 
There are a number of wonderful programs that happen all over the country, and I would like to see them supported more. Uh, people talk about the homicides that take place in Chicago. People talk about the African American on African American crime as though people in communities are not working to stop this on a daily basis. But you know, the projects, the programs that fight the problems that really try to address what's going on with African American males always operate on a shoestring budget. And I think that more resources needs to go. There needs to be a commitment in this country for our youth, period, and especially our vulnerable youth. And African-American males certainly fall into that category. Congresswoman Karen Bass, many thanks for your time. Thanks for having me on.